Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. Today, I want to talk about the top three solar panel manufacturers here in the United States currently. QCell, LG Solar, and Panasonic. But before I get into it, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you find it helpful. When you're considering solar, it can be easy to overlook such an important part of your purchase, especially if you get a salesperson that focuses solely on kilowatt hours, savings, or a lower monthly payment. Honestly, without solar panels, you can't harness sunlight and convert it into a usable form of energy. And if you end up with some random cheap panel, well, your investment just went to then. You'd be surprised at how many different solar modules and manufacturers are out there, and the prices range greatly. I'm starting with QCells because they're currently ranked number one in the United States for the residential photovoltaic market with over 27% of the market share. Now, we are a QCell Q partner, and they are the number one selling module for us too, but we're just one company. So for them to be ranked number one nationwide with 27% market share, they must be doing something right in the R. QCell is a German engineered module. They were a German company too when they opened their doors in 1999 before they were acquired by Hanawa, a multi-billion dollar company. They refer to their patented technology as quantum cells, and not the quantum computing you might be thinking of, but a spin-off of PERC, or Passivative Emitter Rear Cell Technology, P-E-R-C. PERC allows for the passivation of a solar cell's rear side, which involves installing a reflective layer designed to capture previously unused sunlight back into the cell where it can be converted into solar electricity. This quantum technology supercharges ordinary solar cells and modules. To achieve a rear reflection, QCell applies a special nano coating to the rear surface of quantum cells that functions much like a typical household mirror. As rays of sunlight passes through the silicon cell, they reflect back because of the special nano coating and then get absorbed a second time. This technology is commonly used between all top three manufacturers, but they all do it in their own special way. Some other design advantages to Q-cell solar panels that sometimes gets overlooked in their patented is their patented half cell technology. Just about Every solar manufacturer besides QCell and Panasonic has a 60 cell solar panel. That means there are 60 squares of silicon. QCell cut all the cells in half to create a 120 cell solar panel. They also increase the number of bus bars used to allow electricity to flow through the cells from the industry standard of four to six. So they added two more strands. The combination of half cell and six bus bar design results in a higher output of energy with greater efficiency. QCell also uses wire interconnections rather than flat ribbons because they found that it helps reduce shading effects inside the module and increase the power. When you look at the technology behind the QCells, you'll see an increase in performance of 13.5% in real world applications. The best part about all this is QCell is a Fortune 500 company with over $300 billion in assets and resources, making them a very stable and bankable company. And to top it off, they built a facility in Atlanta, Georgia, yeah, here in the United States, to manufacture their newest solar panels. They are committed to, re to the renewable sector and provide customers with an amazing product at an affordable price. Moving on to the second most popular solar panel in the United States, LG Solar. We are also an LG Solar preferred partner and they currently hold around 17% of the residential solar market. And LG has been very popular choice in recent years for commercial applications. LG Solar has two residential panels, the Neon 2 and the Neon R. 
These modules are both high efficiency and high wattage panels. Most customers looking at LG will be offered the Neon 2 as they tend to be a much more cost effective option compared to the Neon R, which is currently the most expensive solar panel in the industry right under sun power. But let's get into the technology LG solar panels use and have available. Both the Neon 2 and the Neon R are a 60 cell panel that uses LG's variation of PERC, which again allows the solar cells to capture sunlight as it passes through the silicon and then when it reflects the sunlight back into the cell from the back sheeting. LG selects only the highest grade silicon available on the market for both their Neon panels. The Neon 2 is currently available at either 320 watts or 350 watts depending on your area, while the Neon R is available at 365 watts or 375 watts depending on availability. It's rumored by the end of 2020, LG will be releasing a 400 watt Neon R. I don't even want to know what the price is going to be. I wish I had more to talk about regarding LG's technology, but to be honest, they don't disclose too much information about their modules compared to Qcell and Panasonic, but LG does do some unique things compared to other manufacturers, which helps them produce high wattage and high efficiency solar panels. Speaking of efficiency, both the Neon 2 and the Neon R offer nearly 22% efficiency I mean, LG solar panels are manufactured in various parts of the world, from the US to Korea to Taiwan. But guess what? You won't be worrying about quality control because LG has boasted that they've never had a solar panel warranty claim for performance issues, and I honestly believe it. The modules we've installed for customers that requested LG solar scream high quality components. The last thing worth noting about LG and its solar technology is I do feel you end up paying a slight premium for the LG name. Before I start talking about Panasonic solar panels, I want to ask you to take a moment and click that subscribe button down below. And if you find this video helpful so far, click the button, click that like button too. Doing both these things lets me know you enjoy what we're creating. And if you're someone that lives in our area, don't wait to go solar. You can get a hassle-free quote from us. Yes right here from me by visiting our website. I provided a link in the description below. Now, let's talk Panasonic, the fourth most popular residential solar panel manufacturer in the United States. And yes, I do know how to count. One, two, three, four, four, oh. oh. Uh, Panasonic actually, as of this video, has slipped from third to fourth place and now only holds 7% of the market share. Who might that company be that surpassed Panasonic? It was SunPower, a rival to many and a friend to very few. I'm not going to talk about SunPower. We had looked at to carrying their modules, but decided it wasn't in the best interest for us or our customers. But getting back on topic, Panasonic, and just like QSound and LG Solar, were a preferred installer for them. It's crazy to think that Panasonic is barely holding fourth place in the residential solar market because I honestly feel like a lot of customers ask about them because of another company that had pitched them. And while they are a very good panel, I don't think they're as good as LG or Qcell and I'm going to get into that now. So Panasonic uses a proprietary silicon which is HIT or heterojunction solar cells. This technology wasn't developed by Panasonic, but by Sanyo Electronics nearly 40 years ago. In the early days at Sanyo, it was determined that the HIT technology was, an in, in, was inefficient and not cost effective. It wasn't until Panasonic's acquisition of Sanyo in the early 90s that they were able to truly develop the technology to what we see today. Now, inside conventional silicon solar cells, one surface of the P-type silicon substrate is formed from an N-type diffusion layer. However, because there are so many defects at the interface between the silicon substrate, the diffusion layer, and the electrode, some of the charge from the sunlight is lost, reducing conversion efficiency. 
the heterojunction solar cells contain n-type silicon substrates covered with a high quality non-doped i-type amorphous silicon. This structure prevents the loss of electrical charge resulting in high conversion efficiency. Here's an image to better see what I'm referring to slash talking about. But in a nutshell, this technology allows the module to have a higher efficiency and power output even during extreme temperatures. In 2014, Panasonic was able to set a world record for the highest efficiency from a silicon photovoltaic cell. Yeah, just, just one little cell. This was out of a research and development department, so not, not something real world. But they were able to achieve 25.6%. This is something that really put Panasonic on the map as a solar panel manufacturer. Mind you, this isn't the efficiency you'll see or find from the current product lineup. The current HIT N340 watt panel has an efficiency of 20.3%. And while that's high, both LG Neon 2 and Neon R achieve more than that, and the QCell G6 panels actually can match it. Panasonic tends to push on their high temperature coefficient rating that helps generate more solar power on extremely hot or cold days. And while this coefficient is something you should take into account, it shouldn't be a selling point. I've done a previous video talking about coefficient and thermal dynamics between different panels and how the energy loss is marginal. There's a link in the description below to check that video out. Now, I will admit that Panasonic has the best 25 year performance warranty at 90.76%. LG and QCell both offer 85, 86, 90%. What this means is that by year 25, your Panasonic HIT solar panel should produce at least 90.76% of their original spec power output. This is almost 6% more than LG and QCell. If you live somewhere that has extreme temperatures like Australia, then this is a panel you're going to want to at least consider. Taking a quick second to compare these three panels side by side, you can see how close they are to one another in wattage, performance, warranty, cell efficiency, coefficient, and price. I created an overall rating of each module. The higher the number, the better value that panel has. Since I'm showing two LG solar panels, their rating is not against each other, but rather each LG panel went against QCell and Panasonic. I awarded one point for each category wattage, efficiency, coefficient, performance, warranty, and system cost. This would give a total possible points earned of 10. So five for each panel they are able to beat. Starting with QCell, QPeak Duo G6 Plus versus Panasonic VBHN 340SA17 versus LG Solar's LG350 N1C V5, or better known as the Neon 2 panel. QCell earned two points for wattage. I decided since the max panel efficiency between these three sp specific panels was so close to award two points to each of these manufacturers just automatically. QCell ties with LG for coefficient, earning one point, earns no points for performance warranty, earns another two points for system cost, giving QCell an overall rating of seven. Next up, Panasonic versus QCell versus LG Solar Neon 2. Panasonic earned no points for max wattage, earned an automatic two points for max efficiency, earned two points for panel coefficient, earned two points for performance warranty, and no points for system cost. Panasonic was awarded an overall rating of six. Moving on to LG Solar, Neon 2 panel versus QCell and Panasonic. LG Solar earned one panel in max wattage, earned an automatic two points for max efficiency, earned one point for coefficient, tying with QCell, earned one point for performance warranty, and earned one point for system cost. This gave LG Solar's Neon 2 panel an overall rating of six. 
And last is the LG Solar Neon R panel versus QCell and Panasonic. The LG R earned two points for max wattage, another two points for max efficiency, one point for coefficiency, two points for performance warranty, and no points for system cost. This gave the LG Neon R an overall rating of seven. One thing that stands out the most is pricing between the three panels. Keep in mind, I did my best to match the system size and kilowatts as close as possible. And all three options are using a solar edge system. So they have solar edge optimizers and a solar edge inverter. Now pricing is just an estimate and is going to vary depending on where you live, your particular home and situation. And of course the company you work with as module availability and pricing varies greatly. I'm just providing you with some figures for comparison purposes. Now that you have the knowledge, maybe you'll be able to make an informed decision on what panel is right for your home and budget. I think what we can all take away from this is that a more expensive panel isn't necessarily better when compared side by side. And another thing you should be asking yourself is if paying more for a little more power at year 25 is worth it. I would have to wager cost of a solar panel will have come down in 25 years and saving that thousand or two thousand dollars now will actually pay off in the long run. If you're interested in receiving a quote for your home from us, Pacific Sun Technologies, then visit us online using the link below. We're happy to provide you with an estimate for your home with all three or four panels actually I just discussed. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Yeah, click that button down below and click the little bell icon too so you'll receive notifications on future videos. We have a lot to talk about this year and we want you to be a part of it. We're in the business of building a renewable future with lasting relationships for you and families to come. Thanks for watching. Until next time.